Hello and welcome back to Mac at the Movies. This week on my weekly VHS Rewind, a little holiday special, if you will. Planes, trains, and automobiles for your Thanksgiving pleasure. Uh, I was trying to think of something to release for this week, uh, Thanksgiving-wise, and uh, I completely forgot about this movie until I was... Uh, on break at work today and I saw a Chris Stuckman video uh, where he had reviewed this and I was like wait a minute that's a Thanksgiving movie I, for some odd reason I thought it was a Christmas movie in the back of my head but uh, yes it's uh, trying to get back home for Thanksgiving John Hughes film uh, it has been shoot five years maybe since I've last seen this it's been a while um, I, I remember uh, an apartment I was living in the last time I watched this, so it, it's been a little while. So I want to get into this. Um, that, I mean, there were a couple other movies that I had in my head. Uh, St. Elmo's Fire, uh, which isn't a Thanksgiving movie, but uh, the last time I watched that, I just remember at one point in time they were in a restaurant or a bar or something like that eating, and that has always been in the back of my head. But um, one of my favorite... Uh, Polly Shore movies. Actually, it is my favorite Polly Shore movie. Um, Son-in-law takes place during Thanksgiving break. So, um, but I've seen that movie a thousand and a half times, and uh, can't uh, advise enough. In if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's it's so much fun. Polly Shore and Son-in-law. Check it out. A lot of fun. Um, but planes, trains, and automobiles. I haven't seen this in a while. Um, <laughs> there's that hilarious scene where Steve Martin drops the F-bomb like 50 times. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, um, j just so much about this movie. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk too much about it, uh, before I get into the rewind. And I know I'm going to talk probably past the rewind because there's some moments in this movie that just uh, get me going. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, got a little stuck there. Uh, let's get that tape out, turn on the TV, and pop this bad boy into the old VCR. Uh, it has been a minute since I've watched this. I'm glad I checked out YouTube on break today, or, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be enjoying this movie today. The, uh, I think it's. By the time I'm recording this, is this feature presentation? Maybe. Feature presentation. I'll pause it real quick. Um, shoot, what was I going to say? Yeah, it's like midnight now. So, technically, it's it's uh, Thanksgiving Thursday. Uh, I, I don't have to... I, I used some uh, vacation time, so I don't have to be back to work until next Tuesday. Uh, so, I will not be getting much sleep at night for this this five day period speaking of turkey bill welcome back everybody say hello to bill he's uh he's gonna be in here uh watching the movie with me uh, i think he saw that val was in here and was like uh, i'm not gonna let you just sit alone in that room with that crazy lunatic of a little girl, um, which she is. She's all over the place, but in the most adorable manner. But, Bill, we're going to get into this. Everybody out there, I'm going to get into this. I'm going to push play, and I will see you after the, uh, after the feature presentation here for the Rewind. Bye. Say bye. Bye. All right, and I am back. So the movie's over. Let's hit stop. Let's talk about this just for a second. I have seen this movie a number of times. Granted, it has been a while since I've last seen it, but I had no clue that there was a scene after the credits of this movie. Uh, it was, um, yeah, I don't want to spoil it for you. It's nothing spectacular. It's not going to blow your mind, but it'll give you a bit of a giggle. Uh, but I had no clue that was there, and I was like, ah, 
<laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah, it, it was a little bit of a giggle, a little fun little adage to this. So let's hit that rewind and talk about this movie. Um, oh yeah, so much fun, so much fun. Um, how do I not remember the names after I've just watched this? I, uh, Neil and Dell, Dale, Neil and Dale. I, I'm terrible with names. I don't know why I just don't remember names. It's like anytime a name comes up, I ignore it. I would say the majority of people I've known my entire life, I couldn't tell you their middle names. That's for sure. Maybe like two or three people, but that's it. So when we're in a movie here, I I forget names all the time. I can never remember the names, uh, which is probably something I need to do. Like if I'm going to do things like this, I should probably keep a little notepad right here and uh, write down the names just as reference. But alas, I don't because I want this to be as spontaneous as possible. However, I've just rambled on for a minute instead of rewinding, and I could have done that in the rewind, but I didn't, you know, rewind. So, uh, we have uh, Neil, who is leaving a, an office meeting about a magazine ad. He's trying to catch an airplane, and everything just keeps on pushing. He has one of those managers that's just looking at, looking at... And can't come up with what it is he wants of this magazine ad. Um, he rushes out, misses a cab, runs into John Candy's character, uh, re-meets him again at the airport, and begins this journey uh, trying to get back home. And uh, sort of forms this friendship bond. Not that necessarily he wanted it. He didn't want it. Uh, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, it, it helps him as a person grow helped Neil as a person grow and it helped uh Del uh you know find some sort of you know love and acceptance in his life so I mean fantastic film if you haven't seen this watch it now I don't know what your hold up is on watching this movie it was a while before I had seen this uh this was the first time I had watched it it was a uh, used copy I bought it back in 2015 which uh shows you know look Get it out there. You need to watch it. I waited too long to see it for the first time. You got to go watch it. Check it out. Such a fun movie. Um, I have since bought it on DVD, uh, but I mean, so much fun. Uh, I had friends tell me about this. I remember seeing the cover and thought it was just some cheesy movie. And in some cases it is, but it's so much fun. The rewind stopped. Um, but I will say, at the beginning of this film, it annoys the ever-living heck out of me when, um, when Dale, or not Dale, um, Neil is trying to get out of the meeting that he's in, and it's literally a guy that, granted, is just, he's married to the job. He's married to the position, and it, it, it may not be that he has a family to go home to, he's married to the job. And for some people, that's cool. Dale wants to get home, or Dale. Uh, Neil wants to get home to his parents, or parents, family. And, you know, that's that's the hold up. He's not going to catch his flight. So he's sitting there while this guy's just like, I just don't know which one to pick. Like, And he doesn't say anything. He just makes, like, gestures. He takes off his glasses, looks closer, puts them back on, and he just can't come up with it. And... The entire time, I'm thinking myself, like, just pick one already. I don't know what's taking you so long. It's a, it's a lipstick ad that no one's ever going to see. <laughs> but it's, you know, one of those movies that everyone, regardless of how, you know, mundane the task is, where you are in your job, there's always that one thing that somebody overanalyzes to a point where you're like... We're wasting more time than we are. Just just pick something. Just Let's just make a vote, pick on something, and go with it. So it, it's one of those moments in the movie. One of two moments in the movie that I'm just like, oh, come on. 
<laughs> the other moment in this film is when uh, Steve Martin's character, who plays who plays Neil, uses the shower after John Candy's character, Dell. And he comes out to a train wreck of a bathroom. I, I, I think I would have had like a slight aneurysm if I would have come out of the shower and just seen all that. I mean, granted, he should have seen all that when he went in there. But man, the only thing he had to dry off with was a hand towel. Like a washcloth, and that's oh man, that that would have that would I, I, there's not a lot that'll just make me mad like off the ledge there. Uh, I mean, there's a lot that will, but like there's not much that yeah. You know, I, I try to think that I'm fairly level headed when it comes to you know what to get mad over, but that right there, I'd have been like, get, come on, <laughs> like what what what. what, what why did you need to use every towel but the washcloth? And, like, it was just the bathroom was a complete disaster. So, um, yeah, those two moments in the film were the two head scratchers that I was just like, this could have been so easily avoided. Uh, but all in all, such a fantastic film. Such just a, you know, silly premise in some way, shape, or form. And, I mean... It spawned, in my opinion, the film Due Date, the uh, Robert Downey Jr. and Zach Galifianakis film. Uh, exact same premise, basically. The exact same premise. However, it you know Zach's character was a like he was an, a, a thriving actor, or well, a, a, he he was hoping to be an actor, and. Robert Downey Jr. was trying to get home for the birth of his daughter. Very similar concept. Uh, there wasn't a snowstorm. It was like a, um, he got kicked off the plane. But yeah. And then uh, going back to it, one thing I really liked, and I'm glad I stumbled upon his review of it. But um, was it Chris Stuckman? His review for this that came out yesterday it, um, I, I didn't know about the train scene when Steve Martin was riding home and his, like, epiphany that John Candy's character didn't have a family. He didn't have a home. So, like, you see all this going on, like, with, like, I, I, I don't want to say, like, juxtapositions, but, like, you see, like, the back and forth, like, his reaction to whatever his thoughts are. And then you see, like, an image of his family or an image of this or an image of that. Like, thinking back to, you know, a moment with Candy's character and his reactions on that train. What Stuckman said, and, you know, he does his research. I'm sure it's very, very accurate. But what he said was... That all that was John Hughes just basically running Steve Martin while he was just kind of trying to come up with what he was going to do. But it was so genuine, he used that as the the catalyst for that scene. And it worked so well. Steve Martin is a flipping genius. I absolutely... Anything he is in, I don't care how, like you know, family-oriented, goofy it is. I don't care how raunchy it is. I don't care how whatever he is in, I absolutely love it. He is one of my favorite comedians. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> this has gone on a long time. Uh, much longer than usual for one of my VHS rewinds. But yeah, I mean, such a fun movie. If you haven't checked this one out, definitely, you know... It's on iTunes right now for like 10 bucks. Pick it up. You can watch it anytime. I'm sure Amazon has it. You can buy it on DVD. I'm sure it's probably in like one of those $5 bins. Pick it up. It's such a good movie. Throw it into your yearly rotation for Thanksgiving uh, with your family. I mean, granted, it is, uh, it's rated R. There's no nudity in it. 
I think it's all based on one scene that uses the F word like 30 times. <laughs> Granted, it is funny. You may not want your, you know, kids to watch it or something like that, but it's such a good movie. There's really not a whole lot about this movie that is terrible. I, I It looks like it came out in 87. Um... I mean, again, there's nothing, like, raunchy or dirty in the film that would make you think, like, your kids can't watch it. It's just language. Um, they're gonna pick it up from a friend or somebody, so, um, if you don't mind them watching it, uh, clearly, you know, definitely let them check it out. But, uh, you know, throw this in your family rotation, uh, every year for Thanksgiving. Uh, again, I thought this was a Christmas movie. I, I don't know why, like... I clearly haven't watched this movie enough, and uh, it was five years ago the last time I watched it. So, you know, I've watched it a handful of times, but it was five years ago. I mean, I bought this in 2015. Man, I, I for like two years, just about, I watched it a number of times. So, yeah, definitely check it out if you get the opportunity. Um, if you've seen this movie, what did you think about it in the comments below? Did you see uh, Stuckman's video? What did you think of that? And did you find some interesting facts about his video that uh, that you enjoyed? Um, if I remember, I'll link that in the description below so you can check out his video. Because it, it, it was fun. It was fun for sure. Um, but yeah, throw down in the comments what you thought. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, thank you for stopping by. Uh, you know, it, it's always a lot of fun. Um, so, you know, I just, uh, I try not to think about it too much, but I just hit a hundred subscribers, which is awesome. Um, I, uh, I, I plan on doing something fun for that. And, um, you know, hopefully everyone enjoys that, but, um, you know, and, and I hope to have a lot more videos coming your way. Uh, I had planned on taking a break uh, come December, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I, I get in the rotation, and it's it's stuck with me, so I, I don't think I could just stop. Um, so I'm just going to keep on going, keep on doing this. Um, I, I got a few more things coming up, a Barnes & Noble haul that... Um, uh, that I got, uh, I got a Barnes & Noble gift card, so I, I had purchased some stuff online, and, uh, I'm gonna share that with all of you, uh, but, yeah, check this movie out, uh, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, again, thank you for stopping by, thank you for everyone just checking out these videos, having a fun time, um, even if you're skipping through to the fun parts, I'm glad that you're joining me, um, and again, always be good to one another, and I will see you next time. Bye.